Hi, this is Carmel. I'm the Crazy Cricket Lady, and I'm here to teach you how to make mandalas, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm sure it's close enough, in Inkscape, so that you can use them in Design Space. Now, I have version 0.92.4 of Inkscape. I just searched in Google, download Inkscape. If you need to download Inkscape, this is the version I will be using, 9.92.4. Click on that, go to All Platforms, and whether you have Mac or Windows, 64-bit, 32-bit, uh, most of you, if you have Windows 10, will have the Windows 64-bit. Download the .exe file. It's a lot easier to use. Install it, and that's what you'll need. You will also need a copy of Snip and Sketch. Now, that is a Windows 10 program. I'm sure that Mac has a comparable one. It's just basically a screen capture. And of course, you'll need a copy of Design Space. Now, these are three mandalas, or three projects I'm working on, just so you can choose the proper type of thing. You, you can do this on any line drawing in design space or any thin line drawing but you'll want to avoid things like this bear here I love it it looks beautiful I would love to make a shirt out of it but it's just too close together for this type of project you need something with some white space so that you can fill in that white space. Now I'm going to show you with the rows first. So I'm just going to hide these other two so that they're there. Okay. And you need to turn off the lines in Design Space. And if you don't know how to do that, it's click this little box up here. It'll give you three different choices for your grid space. You click on the little icon for Snip and Sketch or whatever program you're using to screen capture. New, and then make sure you just capture what you want. And then you will open your version of Inkscape. And I have some settings. I do this all the time, so, but trace bitmap settings. You want it set for color. You want it set for two. You want smooth turned off, stack scan, remove background, and live preview turned on. So control V will put whatever your is, is on your clipboard into Inkscape. We want to turn that into a path, which is what Inkscape works with. So that's what you use trace bitmap for. And you can tell the difference between your path and the copy it just made, first of all, because the original copy you had on there has spaces around the edges. Your path that you just made will not. Delete this one out of the way. We don't need it. This is what we're starting with. Now we want to choose a color that we want to make this in. So this bottom scroll bar is your color choices and you can go anywhere from reds, greens, blues, purples. Let's do purple. Choose one you like. We'll take this one right here and make this the lightest one. I'll make two copies of that. In Inkscape the way you make copies is Control D. So I'm just gonna hit Control D twice the first one goes down here out of the way because that is our first layer. These two layers we need. We're going to go now to fill and stroke. Now, if you're looking for fill and stroke, it's under object fill and stroke. I use it so much it's become an automatic setting. We're going to start by eliminating the fill. Don't worry, it's still there. Turning on the stroke, okay, and then going to stroke style. The automatic setting is 0.039. We're going to change that to 0 0.01. 
because we want it to be a little thicker. After we've got our stroke, we're going to go to path and we're going to click stroke to path. That just made a path out of that stroke. And then we're going to put this flower over top of it. Select both of them and Inkscape. You have to select around everything. If it's not in the square, it won't select any of it. So the drawings that you're doing have to be completely within the square of selection. We're going to go to Align and Distribute, and that again is under the object, and it's down here at the bottom, Align and Distribute. We're going to center it. Inkscape, you have to, it's a two button process in Inkscape, but there it is centered. And now we're going to go to Path, Union. And it makes it a darker color. Now, we're going to set that off here and bring up our other one. Make it a slightly darker color. And put that one over top. And again, select the whole drawing. We're just testing right now. And center it. That looks good. We're going to click off of it so that we can drag this one down here. And we need three copies of this one. So we've got one. Control D twice. That makes three copies. That's that one, that one, and that one was the one that was below first. So we'll keep that one and just store it down there. Okay separate these okay now we're going to make this one a slightly darker color <clears throat> we're going to repeat the fill stroke process this time we're going to do 0 0.15 because i like fewer layers path stroke to path Put this one over it, line them up, and combine them. And that made it darker, so we're just going to make it the color we want it to be. Send that to the back, and that looks good. We'll line it later. We're going to need two copies of this, so Control D, Control D. And that one under it. And we're going to make this one slightly darker again. The fiddling stroke process. Turn it off. Turn on the stroke. Put one fives right where we want it. Path, stroke to path. Put this one over top of it. Center it. And combine them. And you come back. And that's our next layer. This looks good. Now we're going to make the final layer. The final layer is a little easier to use. So we only need one copy of it. We'll put that one back where it was. And to do the final layer, path, break apart, See, it fills in everything that's there, and then path, union. And it makes the final layer. And we'll send it to the back. Take all of these, combine them. We'll align them. And then you need to make them as one piece. So. You click this little thing, which combines all of it into one pattern. And then you need to save it. I've been doing this a few times, so we called this Teaching Rows, and we'll just save it as Teaching Rows again. 
And because I already have one, it asks me if I want to replace it. Okay. Now, go into Design Space and Upload. Upload Teaching Rows. Save it. Insert it. And Inkscape and Design Space have little trouble. They just don't take that and make it full-sized image. So let's see, this one's six, about 6.5. So we'll make this 6.5. And magically, it appears where we can use it again. Okay, as you can see, the first layer is approximately that layer. We'll ungroup from here. You can see the first layer about the same. It may be off just a little bit in size, but it's basically the same one. Then we need to correct the rest of these for contour. Now the easiest way to check the contour of something is to put it over here where you can see it because you can't move this little contour window. You can shrink this down, which is the way I do it, but if you leave that one there where you can see it, it creates one that you can see manipulations on. And we're going to eliminate the little bitty holes. This is caused by the converting it to a stroke and combining them together process. It just saves your cricket from having to cut the little bitty pieces. But you have to do this for each layer. So we're going to put it over there. We're going to call it up. Now, the other way to do this is to hide all of those and select the ones you want. And as you can see on this other one, they're just appearing. This way you don't select the itty bitty little ones. You just select what you want to appear on this layer. And you can go through here and check. Usually after the first one, they're all gone. And I always check the first one to make sure it's one I don't want. Yeah, it's one that it appeared right here. And I don't want that one. So that's that layer. Now you can see here, we forgot to change the color of this bottom one. So we can change this this way. You can just make it a little darker. Now we're still adjusting the color on this one. And again, it's easier to just hide all of them and select the ones you want. They're big enough to actually see. We're stuck with that one right now. Okay. That one's done. And the bottom layer, the contour button doesn't even show up because it doesn't have any contours in it. Okay, now you see there's that little bitty circle right there that didn't come out. So if you want to cover that up, let's see, that's in that layer and that layer. We'll take shape, circle, I'm going to shrink it down. Make it a little odd. Cover it up. And then put them together and weld it. Tends to happen occasionally. We want to fix it on the other layer. Now it's gone. And there we go. You can now make your layered Mandela type project. And we're going to work with this one. Now I'm going to go through this one rather quickly. 
since I already did it once, there is one exception. If you're using a line drawing, there is one additional step in Inkscape. Because these lines are so small, you have to first do a fill in stroke on the first one. Can't use that one as your first layer because it's just too thin. So we're going to take that path, the stroke to path, and we're going to call that our first layer. Okay. Now we'll do the exact same thing that you did before, and I'm not going to go through it all. I'll just show you the end product. And this is what the uploaded image looks like. We're going to take that and ungroup it. And then there, of course, is the top layer. And you have to check them with contour. The difference, the other difference in this is you have to check the top layer because it's going to have little spots in it too. I'm not going to go through all of this with you. I'm just going to turn off the camera and give you a little break. Okay, it's all corrected now, and this is the final product. Again, start from the bottom layer, and I'll show you why. Because see that little piece right there? It's not attached to anything, but in the next layer it is. So when you cut this out, it's going to cut that little piece, and you got to have some place to stick it. And the easiest way to do that is start from the back and work to the front. So that is how you make these two into layered mandala type projects. You can make them from this point as big or as small as you want, but that's how you do it. If you have any questions, I'm Carmel, the Crazy Cricket Lady, and you can email me at blog at crazycricketlady.com. You can leave a comment at the bottom of this video. Or you can contact me on my Facebook page, which is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. And if I'm not available, then everybody else there will help you. This has been the Crazy Cricket Lady and how to make the layered mandala type projects. Bye now.